Welcome back. Well, let's talk about that for a moment. Mr. Mark Jacob and Zama joins us. He's a former Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice for Kaduna States. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Now, with the deployment of special forces in the area now, has anything improved? Thank you very much for uh, having me. It's important to say that um, the deployment of troops has not changed anything. Because two days ago, um, about 11 people were killed in different locations in Southern Kaduna. Houses were burnt, and of course, there was no arrest. For us, nothing has changed. For us, the curfew that has been imposed on parts of Southern Kaduna is still ongoing. Farmers cannot till the ground. They cannot take care of their crops. The crops have been destroyed by cattle, and there is no arrest. So nothing has changed. Well, it, you know, for conversations to be held, for stakeholders to sit together, the governor, you know, said it in that uh, report that you heard. Of course, the CAN chairman has said it, and of course, Mr. Jonathan Asake in that statement also said that there is a need for all parties to come to a roundtable and have a conversation. Why hasn't that happened, and how far-reaching do you think that will be? I believe that that is the right direction to approach this issue. But all of us know, and I'm sure Channels Television has the recorded uh, interview of His Excellency, my own governor, Governor National Air Fire, wherein he said that the Southern Kaduna people are bigots and that he's not going to sit with them, he's not going to speak with them, and that they are part of the problem. And the language he used was that he is going to go after everybody and he will deal with everybody. Now, once you have said, that you are not going to talk to the people, you don't have any business with them, you have already become an, you, you are no longer an unbiased empire, umpire in the issue. You are no longer in a position to dispassionately call people together and have them talk to you in confidence. Look, why would the governor of Cardinal State, for instance, refuse to talk to the calm leadership in Kaduna State, but be comfortable enough to talk to the leadership of Khan from Abuja. Why would the, 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 the governor of Kaduna be unwilling to open his doors and discuss with the leadership of the Adara Development Association or the, 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 the leaders of the Adara people, but is willing to go to Lagos, to go to Abuja, and hold discussions with people who are not in any way connected to the issues, who are neither victims or can be said to be the, the aggressors. Now, groups you mentioned, like the if you can hear me, have these groups you mentioned requested meetings with the governor and he rebuffed them? I have several letters written by the other people in Kajuru local government seeking audience with the governor. And this has been rebuffed. And the governor has said it. I can replay the tapes where he said he is not going to talk to them. He's not going to discuss with Southern Kaduna people. So what do you do? And, and these are the challenges we have when you come to office with a predetermined position on issues. And when you seek to speak, not as governor, but as yourself, with your own prejudices and your own interpretation of issues. It is wrong for anybody in government to assume that he knows it all. And it can, you can never solve problems with that approach. And I will make this very point clear, that there is no war or bitterness or hatred between the Southern Kaduna and the entire Muslim or Hausa Fulani community in Kaduna State. It's not true. There is a percentage, a very minute percentage of people who are behind these killings. Government that has the responsibility of dealing with them, has refused to deal with them. And just like Sheo Sani said, uh, Senator Sheo Sani said, when killings take place in Zamfara and other states, 
the government condemns such killings. But when it happens in Southern Kaduna, there is an explanation. And the explanation comes from government house. This is the challenge and the very serious issue bedeviling solving, solving this problem. We have had issues in the past. Previous governments, even military administration, didn't approach this issue like this. They interfaced with people. Committees were set up that interacted with people. And government was seen to be impartial and genuine in addressing the issue. Government dispassionately opened its doors and allowed people to discuss. Just after speaking with the Khan national leadership, you had the tapes. The governor said that Southern Katana elites are lazy and that they are waiting to be paid money. That is why the crisis is going on. And that he wasn't going to give them money. And that he wasn't going to talk to them. How do you solve a problem? Having become the champion or the ruler, you have already ruled that these are the culprits. Can, 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 can we take... Can yeah. we just, just one moment. These issues you raised definitely give concern, but um, at the state level and at the federal level in two chambers of the National Assembly, there are representatives of people of Southern Kaduna. What have they been able to do to intervene in this matter? Because at least one would expect that they represent the people and they also should be able to you know, put their foot on the ground and make some effort. At least they should be able to speak with the governor. The governor, two weeks ago, when the caucus of the National Assembly from Southern Kaduna met and spoke on the floor of the Senate and on the floor of the House of Representatives, and then they addressed a press conference calling on the governor to do certain things. The governor responded by calling them irresponsible leaders. I, 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 I am sad that this is the body language and the narrative that comes from government housing. It cannot work when you have already compartmentalized your state, me versus them, me against them. They hate me, I'm going to deal with them. They don't like me, I'm going to handle them, I'm going to send them to prison. But, but, but Mr. Nzama, well, I think we'll have to double check some of those things that you say, if that's the case, actually. But um, are there people who are requesting funds from the governor? Because if he's saying it at that level, it means that such exists. Are you saying that they don't exist at any point in time whatsoever? The truth remains, who is asking for money? The governor has given evidence only everywhere that. I'm sorry, could, could you take that again? Uh, that part where you say he's given evidence, I think uh, it was coming in broken. We couldn't make uh, sense of that uh, perspective. But let's hopefully, when he does come back, if it's a little clearer, we will get back to that. But just give us a moment. We'll be back. All right, welcome back. Well, the connection, having some challenges uh, getting back to Mr. Nzama, but we do have him on the line. So, Mr. Nzama, could you talk about, clarify what you meant? You, you were talking about uh, having some sort of evidence. What were you trying to say? Yes, I was saying that available records, even on, on, on uh, available even to channels, will show that the governor has said in very clear terms that he's not to engage with Southern he's not going to engage or interface with Southern Kaduna people. And you refer to specifically? Pardon? Which of the records are you referring to specifically? Yes, the video recordings of interviews with even channels television where the governor has said he's not going to speak with Southern Kaduna people. These are the records we are talking about. And when you say so, you have placed a barrier.
between the people that are affected, the victims, and you are saying you are not going to speak with them. But you are comfortable to speak with visitors. You have a can leadership in Kaduna State. You will not speak with them. You have Tell us then, if the governor speaks with the uh, people of Southern Kaduna, what will change? How will it affect things? The biggest benefit of that will that he would have an understanding of the issues. You don't claim to know everything. You cannot solve a problem while exercising a section of the state and, 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 and completely blanking them out. You, you cannot solve the problem. How does he know in, what we If he speaks to he members in the National Assembly and in the State House of Assembly who are representing people from Southern Kaduna? Those are people he calls irresponsible. He doesn't believe them. He doesn't believe or respect anybody. He has said that the, 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 the representatives of Southern Kaduna in the National Assembly who spoke, he said that they were irresponsible people. So where do we run to? Uh, uh, who will speak for us? I'm sorry, but did you... I didn't quite get what you were going to say about what will change if he speaks to them. Apologies on that. Okay. I said what will change first will, will, is that he would have first-hand information from the victims, from the victims of these attacks as to what they think and how the attacks take place. What is happening is that the governor continues to rely on third-party information from those around him in government who stay with him in government house. They are not in the hinterland where these attacks take place. So they give him information that he wants to hear. And that is why the narrative he has been bandying that Southern Katuna people are the ones killing themselves. It is now, while you were attorney general, while you were in government, did you, did the government at the time speak to the people in Southern Kaduna? What changed? Yes. The, the, the government of Kaduna State back then set up what is on record today as the Committee of Elders, Leaders of Thought Forum that was set up by government. 30 people from the North, 30 people from the South. I was part of that project. Governor McCarthy set up that team and insisted that they should discuss across board without the interference of government and even make suggestions as to what was, what was the, solution, the way forward on several things. And that discussion gave birth to the creation of chief dumps. Erufai has come to embarrass and humiliate all those chiefs. He has degraded some of them. He has removed so many district heads, he has changed the nomenclature of all the chiefdoms and injured the respect and the, 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 the harmony that existed in the state. Well, I, I thought that they said this crisis had been on for over 40 years. That's a lie. That is a big lie. Kaduna State. Kaduna has been on for? Had issues. Not Southern Kaduna. The Southern Kaduna issues I remember are basically three. The first was this incident in, in, in uh, 1987 uh, uh, when there was a problem with a preacher in the College of Education. And Muslim students protested. It, 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 it blew up into a crisis. The second issue was the relocation of the market in Zango, which also erupted into violence. The third was the problem in Kaswamagani. Now, we have had several other issues in Kaduna Metropolis and Kaduna North. People keep 
talking about crisis in Kaduna without situating it. Look, there has been no fight in Southern Kaduna. Even when we had Maitatine, it didn't get to Southern Kaduna. We had the protests and killings that, that arose out of the Miss World contest. There was no issue in, in Southern Kaduna. All right, Mr. Mark Jacob and Zama. We need to anchor at that point. Uh, Mr. Mark Jacob Anzama is the former Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice for Kaduna State. We do thank you for your thoughts this morning.